Out for a hike on the mountainside, you suddenly find yourself in an unfamiliar patch of forest. You thought you were on the trail, but now you're lost somewhere inside the woods. Your phone isn't picking up a signal, and as the hours turn to days, you hope that someone has noticed your absence and called for help. And then, you hear it. A helicopter. Sprinting through the trees towards the sound, as you break into a clearing, you see them. Rescue operators, searching for you. They take you aboard the helicopter, and as you settle into the relief of being rescued, one of them says something strange. Good work on that SOS sign. We might not have found you without it. You're confused. You never made an SOS sign. And yet, there it is, in the clearing below you. But if you didn't, then who did? Before we get into that, let's talk about this video's sponsor, Bespoke Post, a monthly membership club delivering a box of awesome top shelf goods from under the radar brands. It's free to join and you can skip a month or cancel any time. 90% of the products come from small brands, many of which are based right in the US. We receive the Knife in the Terra Box, made by Bare Bones based in Salt Lake City. Every month, Bespoke Post introduces members to cool new products. Categories include outdoor gear, barware, home and kitchen goods, clothing, and more, even live oysters, based on a preference quiz they fill out. Every box of awesome has around $70 worth of goods inside, but costs you only a fraction of the value. Preview your box of awesome before it's shipped and decide if you'd like to keep it, swap it for a different box, or if you want to skip the month entirely for no charge, you only pay for what you want. The woven box features a soft Adirondack blanket from Doug Goodfeather's Faraday. The blanket is custom woven on a loom made from organic cotton that is brushed specifically to feel time warm. The box also comes with incense cones that make your home smell like cedar and lavender. If you love to work with your hands in the garden, the Terra box might be the perfect fit. It features a lovely, thoughtfully made multitasking knife made by Bare Bones based in Salt Lake City. The knife has a serrated and straight edge edge, helping you get through any gardening challenge. The blade itself is shaped with a curvature and can be used as a spade scoop, and the depth markers are a massive help in the garden. The box includes a charcoal scrub bar to help you wash away the day's work, while the Audubon bird call helps you invite local songbirds into your garden. If you prefer to go on camping trips, the Explore box is the right one for you. It comes with Koala Tree's Nomad Portable Backpack with a water-resistant ripstop material that can fold right into its inner pocket. The box also comes with a durable and leak-proof water bottle, a powerful LED headlamp, and a delicious toasted coconut vanilla bean bar. To get 20% off your first box of awesome, Awesome. Click the link in the description and enter code BREW at checkout or go to bespokepost.com slash brew. July 24th, 1989. The climbing trail along Mount Asahidake on Japan's northernmost island of Hokkaido was the scene of a search and rescue operation. Two hikers had been reported missing the previous night, but due to poor weather conditions, the search was only beginning now. At just over 7,500 feet, Mount Asahi is the highest mountain on the island of Hokkaido. At its base is a small hot spring resort village by the name of Asahi Daki Onsen. Consisting of a dozen buildings, plus a youth hostel, a few hotels, and some wooden lodges. It's a popular destination to explore Daisetsuzen National Park, Hokkaido's largest national park, and the hiking trails around it. Using a ropeway, interested hikers can access the paths along Asahi Dake including the one that our two hikers got lost on. The hiking trail on Asahidake starts off easy around the upper ropeway station and then becomes more difficult as you proceed to the summit. Making things even more difficult is one of the landmarks for the correct trail, nicknamed the Safe Rock, looks dangerously similar to a fake Safe Rock, which leads to an area with deep bamboo growths that is apparently easy to enter and difficult to leave. These days, the Ropeway websites provide live footage of Asahi Dake and contains a number of warnings for interested hikers, detailing how important it is to come prepared, how quickly the weather can change, and how important it is to immediately call the police if you get lost. Local maps, signs, and announcements all warn about dangerous weather conditions and advise visitors to make sure they have the right equipment, like a compass, a map, food, and water, whether they're hiking or hitting the ski hills. However, at the time, the lost hikers wouldn't have been able to whip out their smartphone, find a signal, and give the authorities a call. But fortunately for them, the owner of the hotel the two were staying at reportedly noticed that they hadn't returned that night and contacted the authorities. But given poor weather conditions in the evening, rescue operations had to begin the next day. As the search and rescue operation unfolded along the mountainside, ground crews searched along the hiking trail as a police helicopter flew around the mountain. Then, the helicopter spotted something, 
the letters SOS, indicating someone was in distress. The letters were 16 feet long and 10 feet wide, made of downed birch trees laid along the ground in a clearing on the mountainside. It was clear as, well, a clearing to rescuers now that the rain was gone. The distressed hikers were down there, and they were in trouble. Landing in the clearing, the rescue crews soon found the hikers emerging from the nearby woods and brought them back to the helicopter. As they took off, they complimented the hikers on the SOS sign. Without it, finding the two would have been much more difficult. But the hikers were confused. What SOS sign? They hadn't made anything like that. The authorities were stunned. If these two hadn't made the sign, that left them with a terrifying question. Who had? This left the police with what we in the mystery solving biz call a pickle. If the missing hikers they'd just rescued hadn't made the SOS sign that drew them in, that meant that there might be another lost soul down there awaiting help. And another person in distress meant another rescue operation. But it turns out that the sign had been there much longer than they had initially expected. See, the Japanese Forestry Service took aerial photographs of the region to help survey the area for topographical maps every five years, the last of which had been back in 1987. And when investigators looked, there it was. The letters were hard to see and easy to overlook. Measuring a whopping 0.9 millimeters or less than 0.1 of an inch in the photograph. But they were there which told investigators that, at the very least, the letters were two years old. However, when they checked the photos from 1982, there was no distress message to be seen. So, the message had been left sometime in the five years between. On July 25, 1989, a second rescue operation began to investigate the site of the mysterious letters and hopefully find whoever left them. And soon, rescuers found who may have been the one responsible. But not in the way they had hoped. In a grisly scene, rescue operations found human bones scattered about the site and scratched with bite marks. Time, exposure to the elements, and presumably hungry foxes and other scavengers had left behind no skin or flesh making identification impossible. Even more disturbing, some of the bones were fractured in such a way that indicated the person had been injured while still alive. During the search, authorities turned up another clue, a backpack filled with personal belongings. At first inspection, there didn't seem to be anything too out of place within. Toothpaste, soap, a towel, a cassette player, and four cassette tapes full of theme songs of popular anime from the time. But upon further investigation, one of the tapes was found to contain something unexpected. A distressed man shouting out a cry for help. Translated, the tape's contents became, SOS, help me. I can't move on the cliff. SOS, help me. I am at the spot where I first saw the helicopter. The Sasa is deep and I cannot go upwards. Lift me up from here. Sasa is a kind of bamboo that grows around the mountain. And it's clear that a deep growth of it, like that near the fake safe rock, was keeping the mysterious victim from going somewhere. And there was something odd about the tape. The man mentions being near a cliff, saying he can't move. But neither the bag nor letters were close to a cliff. Plus, while the items in the bag may have been fine for a beginner hiker, they weren't as much equipment as you'd probably want when tackling a more advanced hiking trail. And then, another curveball. When the bones were sent away to Asahikawa Medical University, analysis showed that they were the remains of a woman with type O blood. And now, investigators had the pieces to a puzzle that didn't seem to fit together. A bag presumably belonging to the man shouting for help in the tape, the bones of an unknown woman, the giant SOS sign, and a cry for help that had been there for at least two years. What had happened on the side of Mount Asahidake? As the mystery thickened, the police were handed a new thread to follow from an unexpected source. 
While investigating the scene, a reporter for Hokkaido TV station HBC made a discovery, a hole under some roots that seemed to have been occupied at some point. Inside, the reporter found a number of personal items, personal items that included a driver's license for one Iwamura Kenji. Iwamura was a Konan City man who had gone missing while on a hiking trip to the very same mountainside five years prior, well within the range of time that the SOS sign was built. With a name, police had a lead they could finally pursue. They approached Iwamura's parents, and when asked to confirm the identity of who they had found, they weren't certain about the voice on the tape. Which brought up another question. If the voice on the tape wasn't Iwamura, then who was it? Plus, there was another question in the minds of investigators. If Iwamura was the one to make the sign, then how did he do it? Police weren't able to find an axe, and Iwamura didn't seem the kind to do manual labor, especially under distress. In fact, a coroner's report believed he would have been unable to lay all the logs on his own. And who was the mysterious woman whose bones were found? Well, to break some of the mystique over the story, the Asahikawa Medical University had made a mistake during their initial analysis. Initially, after Iwamura's belongings were found, investigators thought they were now on the trail trying to find two missing people, a woman and a man. After revisiting the bones, however, they found that the remains actually belonged to a man with blood type A, matching Iwamura's description. And that's where the case went dark. While his parents weren't sure about the voice on the tape recorder, they were sure about the belongings in his bag. They belonged to Iwamura. So, whose voice was on the tape? Well, Iwamura, probably. Look, you'd expect parents to recognize their child's voice, but would you expect them to recognize their soft-spoken son's voice when it was screaming for help? How about screaming into a tape recorder that has been left outside for five years in a tone most likely meant to be played on repeat to hopefully catch someone's attention? Cassette tape recordings get a bit distorted at the best of times. Add in potential repeated usage to play the distress signal out, and five years of exposure to the elements during which they didn't hear anything from Iwamura, and it's not out of the question that the voice just became unrecognizable. And while police weren't able to find an axe or a tool that could cut through birch trees, that's not to say there wasn't one. We already know that animals chewed on Iwamura's bones. It's certainly not out of the question that one may have moved an axe. It may have also been picked up by a hiker, or maybe it's just still there, waiting to be found. Iwamura's driver's license was found in a hole by a reporter. It's not exactly a reach to think that there may be other things somewhere on the mountainside that have yet to be discovered. Or maybe he made the SOS sign out of fallen trees. Sure, that's a lot of trees to find fallen over on the side of a mountain, but strong winds and storms have a habit of doing that. So what about the cliff? Iwamura mentioned in his tape that he couldn't move down from a cliff, especially not with broken bones, right? But his bones weren't found near a cliff. Well, let's look at the options. Suppose the weather could have moved Iwamura's bones, like a flash flood or avalanche carrying them down from the cliff. But given that his bones were found near the SOS sign he presumably built, that feels like more of a stretch than a snapped rubber band. So it might be best to look at other options, like what if he was able to move after making the tape? After all, Iwamura never said his leg was broken in the tape, just that he couldn't move from his position. But getting desperate, he may have taken his chances and pushed on despite the danger, and moved to a clearing where he could make a sign. Sure, he wouldn't have been able to make a sign like that out of fallen trees in a single day, but who knows how long a time he built it over. Plus, people have been known to push themselves past their usual boundaries in life-threatening situations. And given that cutting down trees on a mountainside can be dangerous, it's quite possible that finishing the sign is how he broke those bones. There is one other small possibility, though. Maybe Iwamura didn't lay the SOS sign at all. With the bag and the hole located nearby, anybody could have left it between 1982 and 1987, and five years is a long time. It could have been that other hikers got lost upon the mountain and laid the sign, only to find their way back or, well, meet the same fate. Whatever the case, the tale of Iwamura is a sad one. Left lost upon an unfamiliar mountainside, crying out for help, 
but never receiving an answer. At the very least, one of his cries for help seems to have saved the lives of others who got lost in the same locale. The SOS incident on Asahidake is a tragedy and a good case of why it's important to be prepared when you go for a hike. Make sure you have the proper equipment, know the trail, and travel using the buddy system whenever possible. And these days, having a phone on hand with access to GPS maps is always a plus.